welcome back to another episode of What's a Prof. Hi, Martin. Hi, Walter. So we are here. People have been waiting a long time for this one. Well, we didn't want to do it before we knew what the man was going to say, right? Correct. So let's jump into it and try and put the puzzle together that it can make sense. But before we do that, Martin, we better pray. Yes, let's open with a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, thank you once again for giving us the opportunity to do these discussions, important um, matters that happen in the world, and we have to put it into prophetic picture. So please help to enlighten our minds and guide us through this, this discussion. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, Martin Laudato Deum doesn't stand by itself. It's no. not a standalone uh, document. No, it's actually an exhortation. It's an exhortation. I must say, when I read it, I was somewhat disappointed. Uh, it sounded more like a high school project <laughs> than it did. <laughs> well, ma that's interesting you say that because I think a lot of people, there's always a big hype, like we said, yes. before one of these things come out. Why? Why is there a big hype? But we must, we must realize, as I said, it's not a standalone. It has a long precursor, and there are many sub-organizations mm -hmm. that have climbed onto the bandwagon. And not only sub-organizations, whole political systems have been raised up. Whole political parties have been raised up over years. The whole green movement, everything that mm -hmm. goes along with it, and uh, all the strikes that you have, and the climate activists, and all of this. This is a very, very busy program. Yeah. And these are just little pointers pointing in a particular direction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they're not going to be repeats of what has already been done. And that's, I think, where some people miss it. They expect in every single one to have a clear cut. Here's the legislation we've been waiting for. And they think it's going to emanate from the first beast. No, no, no. Oh. The second beast listens to what mother has to say mm -hmm. and then implements mother's wishes. But mother is not going to implement no. the wishes. The second beast has to implement the wishes. And if the second beast looks like it doesn't want to do what it has to mm -hmm. do or seems to not play ball, like a naughty little child or daughter, she will have to be reprimanded and oh, brought back mm. into line. Yes. But we have to look further. We have to look at other issues and mm. other documents and see what have they put in place yeah. so that when the prophetic picture is full, everything can be implemented. That's true. So we have to look at a little bit of the backdrop. So Laudato Diem, uh, versus Project 2025. Let's have a look at a little bit of world news of late. The New York Times nationwide alert reaches cell phones, TVs, and radios. And they made quite sure in the United States that they gave it a low profile. In other words, they didn't say why they did it. It was just to test the old equipment to see whether it would still do the job, right? Yeah. Every television, radio, and cell phone in the United States broadcast a message on Wednesday that said, this is a test of the National Wireless Emergency Alert System. And then we don't have to read it all. How often are the tests run on a national scale? This was the seventh time that a nationwide test of the emergency alert system has been beamed to radios and televisions. And this was only the second test transmitted to all cellular devices. So how important is it, Martin, that the whole nation becomes integrated into the web? Every, this is the whole nation, but they also want, that's why digital I, IDs and all of that, they want actually the whole world to be integrated. Into this. It's just the lead. That's it. But the, it, it applies to everyone. Does it apply to, to Africa? Oh, for sure. Every single country. So what types of alerts can I expect? Well, there are very few circumstances where you will notify the entire country about something 
Mr. Schlegelmilch said presidential alerts may be sent in a national emergency. Mm -hmm. They didn't define the national emergency. Exactly. Have there ever been false alarms? Yes. January 2018, people in Hawaii received a false emergency alert warning them of an incoming ballistic missile. I remember that one. Do you remember that? Uh, not uh, much, no. So this is the only little clue that, that it might have something to do with nuclear events, but mm. otherwise it could be earthquakes, climate disasters. Uh -huh. What about a national... Uh, em, uh, climate emergency. Yes, what about a climate emergency? So this is what happened in the United States and very interesting, on the exact same day, the exact thing happened in Russia. So what happened in Moscow? Sirens wailed across Russia and TV stations interrupted regular programming to broadcast warnings Wednesday as part of a sweeping drills intended to test the readiness of the country's emergency responders amid the fighting in Ukraine. I just wanted to say, you know, they put that part, amid the fighting in Ukraine, I think it's just they're, they're trying to use the Ukraine, but that is not the actual reason no, why no, no, they that's tested not it. this. So as part of the drills, TV stations broadcast the notice saying, Attention everyone, the readiness of the public warning system is being tested. Please remain calm. Russian media said the exercises scenario mentions the increasing danger of a conflict between nuclear powers. So they were a little bit more blatant about it, mm -hmm. right? Now, I don't know whether this actually transpires or not. Is it planting the seeds of fear? It's the whole time running on that fear monster. N not only that, is it preparing the mind for coming calamities? Yes. I mean, climate is the whole time a fear-mongering. I'm also always interested in the way that they, they portray the events and how the media presents them. You know, in the old days, it, they would say, storm name so-and-so is approaching, batten down the hatches, make yeah. sure this, that, and the other. Now it says, mega storm! Barreling towards <laughs> so a, the or words a, apocalyptic they, storm, or you know, they always use the and the, the worst storm in human history. <laughs> Correct. And then when you when it finally is over, and even if it is very bad, mm -hmm. it's not worse than those that have preceded it. But uh, there's a lot about that in, in any case. But in the, the media. what we trying to say is there's this constant portraying of fear that the subconscious is constantly waiting for something for something to bad to happen does the bible say calamities will increase yes so is the devil preparing the mind for it and then giving it a naturalistic or a nuclear holocaust definitely. flavor whereas it might just be signs of the times definitely because the bible says we should not fear yes and so the bible ahead of time, warned us these things will happen. But now the devil and his conies are trying to make you fearful and always alert of something bad that will happen, where your trust, which is uh, supposed to be directed somewhere else. Yeah. So Russian media said the exercises scenario mentions the increased danger of a conflict between nuclear powers and simulates a response to a situation in which 70% of housing and all vital infrastructure have been destroyed, wide areas contaminated by radioactive fallout, and a general mobilization announced. So coincidentally, do you believe that, Martin? I don't think there's a lot of coincidence. The U.S. federal government on Wednesday is testing the emergency alert system designed to allow the president to speak to the American people within 10 minutes during a national emergency via outlets such as radio and television. So Martin, the world is being prepared for something. Mm -hmm. And with all this hype of crying wolf, climate emergency is coming, catastrophe is coming, oceans are going to rise, there will be flooding, there will be destruction on a scale that nobody has ever seen before. This is preparatory to something that must happen in the mind, right? True, correct. What is it they want to happen in the mind? This is what we have to look That's at. It.
So this is all tools. Tools, yes. Now, the climate emergency is very bad. How are nations going to react? Well, Sky News report that drivers in Singapore now need to pay 88,000 pounds for permission to own a car, vehicle not included. Uh, that will put it out of the reach of how many? Probably the most. All of them, basically, yeah. unless the multi-millionaires jump in and buy everyone a car, right? Yeah. So the city-state is the most expensive place in the world to be a motorist, with skyrocketing prices putting cars out of the reach for most middle-class Singaporeans. There's a need to lower one's aspirations from achieving the good life to settling with a good enough life, says sociologist Tan Ern Ser. So now we have a few people, not least of which is the Pope himself, telling you what is good enough for you. He's going to decide, uh -huh, mm -hmm. and all his cronies are going to say yes. And even if they're not his cronies, they have been influenced by his mindset. Well, it says the mark of a beast will take it be taken either on the arm or the forehead. Okay. Now, Martin, when the Bible says the whole world wandered, in other words, received the same thinking pattern as the beast, then this is a very serious issue. Mm -hmm. Very serious. Well, that language also sounds like Klaus Schwab. Well, you will be... Yes. Owning nothing and be happy. They're singing the same tune and they're using the same instruments. Mm -hmm. Now here's another article. Switzerland considers jailing anyone who heats rooms above 19 degrees centigrade for up to three years if the country is forced to ration gas due to the Ukraine war. All right, so the, the legislation is becoming pretty draconian. It's uh, forerunners. Forerunners, yes. It's forerunners of what... Because you can see it's slowly creeping to where this will head. Won't there be a time of trouble such as never mm -hmm. was? Mm -hmm. So this, this, does this sound like trouble? <laughs> yes. Now we live in a town called Hutzbreit, right? And it's a, it's a warm place. Mm -hmm. Too warm for many people. So you get accustomed to, to the heat. If our temperature drops below 25 degrees centigrade, then we grab for blankets, yeah. and everybody else thinks it's hot. That's true. <laughs> if you're walking around in London, they say, lovely day when it's 11 degrees centigrade. Exactly, 25 is a heat wave. <laughs> yes, <laughs> where people end up in hospital. So this is, this is hype. So the Department of Finance explained that the rate for fines on a daily basis could start at 30 Swiss francs, it's about 26 pounds. He added that the maximum fine could go up to 3,000 Swiss francs. You know, Martin, this kind of legislation they've also introduced in many countries where it was illegal to quote certain Bible verses mm -hmm. and you could end up paying fines towards the yeah. more or less in this. Even jail time? Even jail time, yes. So your freedom of movement your freedom of activity, your freedom of speech, mm -hmm. uh, goodbye. They're all going out of the window. And it's all for the common good. It's all for brotherly love, like we've, we've seen so many times. All of this is for the benefit of humanity. Yes, it's for the common good, mm. for the common good. There's another article from the National Review, From Net Zero to Jail. As is obvious by now, net zero is by definition coercive. But net zero means you have to stop breathing yeah. because you produce CO2. So if you're going to produce zero CO2, you have to stop breathing. But I've got news for you. Even if you've stopped breathing, you're going to decay and produce carbon dioxide. <laughs> so you have to decay away to dust before you become net zero. This is ludicrous idiocy excuse me and in any case if net zero becomes the norm in the atmosphere everything dies because the plants won't have any nutrients left and they won't have anything to breathe no no and they won't be able to produce oxygen so the net zero world is one of prohibitions 
bans and restrictions. As it evolves, you will not be able to buy the type of car that you might want or cook with the type of stove you might prefer or even eat more than a sliver of the beef that you once enjoyed because a cow produces greenhouse gases when it dares to breathe or burp. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's worse than a car. <laughs> That's interesting when you look at the news and you see the climate activists blocking the roads. You see the drivers becoming angry, climbing out of their cars, beating up the climate activists, dragging them from the road and carrying on driving. Uh, these people will have to learn a lesson, Martin. Oh, for sure. How about a, a hefty fine? A hefty fine or a little bit of jail time just yes. to get them back in line. What about deprogramming camps? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Didn't Hillary Clinton just recently say that all Trump followers have to be reprogrammed? Mm -hmm. Of course. And uh, so it seems the world is being programmed. And anybody who doesn't want to be programmed is an enemy of the state. So ministers want to grant themselves powers to create new criminal offenses and increase civil penalties as part of efforts to hit net zero targets. Under the proposals, people who fall foul of regulations to reduce their energy consumption could face up to a year in prison and fines of up to 15,000 pounds. Martin, we're moving up. Yeah, but this is in Britain. Yes. Now, 3,000, 5,000, 15,000. Martin, where are the people going to get this kind of money? No, nope. jail. God, so, but then they have to let loose some criminals to let enough space. You remember with the COVID situation in South Africa, they had to let loose criminals to make space for the people that were violating COVID lockdowns. Exactly. So people who wanted to breathe had to go to jail, and people that were murderers had to be released from jail. It's all very logical. Mm. Okay, does this create a hype? Oh, yes. Now, did this kind of talk and this kind of legislation come about because of Laudato Deum, or was it there before? This is before Laudato Deum. That's why we are showing these things. Okay, so there has been a movement behind the scenes to reprogram humanity. Mm -hmm. And if humanity doesn't learn, then a calamity or two is very useful. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that they deliberately created the calamity, but I'm not denying it either. Be that as it may, whether the calamity is natural and mm -hmm. produced by other forces, including demonic, or whether it is man-made, the result will be the same. We've always kept to that. All right. So people could also be prosecuted for provision of false information about energy efficiency or the obstruction of an enforcement authority. And so fake news will be legislated against. But that will be fake news according to them. According to them, yes. So 32,000 scientists can say there is no climate change. They'll all be and dead. one pope with zero education in climatology says there is, and the world has to be programmed to wonder, to think like the beast. Exactly. That's how it works. That's how it? It, and it's on its way. All right. Here's another one. A utility company locked thousands of customers out of their smart thermostats in Colorado. So thousands of Colorado residents found themselves locked out of their smart thermostats during sweltering temperatures last week in an effort to prevent power demand from overwhelming the grid. These people have no idea what it's like to live in South Africa. No. No. They think if 5,000 people are without electricity, it's a major disaster. We have continuous rollouts daily and 65 million people sit without power every for three hours, four hours per day. And sometimes very much more much than more. that. Very, very much more. So, Martin, this is, uh, is this control? Yes. So, it's interesting that even your solar systems, 
Even if you put in your own solar system, it's coupled to the web. And sometimes something goes wrong with it, but you do not have to get an agent in to come and fix it. They fix it via the web. Mm -hmm. And they can change all your settings via yeah. the web. Can't they switch it off they via the web? They can switch it off as well. Hmm? Yeah. So in whose control are you? In theirs. Well, I don't know if they implement it, but they were talking about in our country that if you are using solar power, you'll be having to pay a subsidy or a levy towards the electricity that you were supposed to use from the, uh, the country's grid. Which doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's the way it is. But not only electricity, water as well. If you have a well, yeah. then they want to put a meter on it. And if you don't have a well, they want to put a rain meter on yes. your property yes. so that you can pay rain tax. Hmm. I think that's already implemented, if I'm not mistaken. So who owns the environment and who owns the climate? The government. Can they change it? Yes. Do they use chemtrails to change it? Hmm. I think so, yes. Yes, okay. But be that as it may, if you can control it, then you can use it as a weapon. That's a thing. And the weapon can change a mindset. Now, what if the mindset is associated with morality? Mm -hmm. uh, then it becomes interesting because then it's not just an environmental issue, it becomes a moral issue, That's right? So, let's get some morality into it. Here is the BC Catholic letters, walking to church on car-free Sunday. So, they want to introduce legislation that will lower the carbon footprint and walking to church will do that. So walking to church will put less greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Mm. You better stop breathing while you're walking as well because uh, that could be problematic, particularly if a whole family is walking to church, right? Yeah. So Sunday and introducing legislation regarding Sunday, is this a moral issue? Yes. Okay, it's part of the moral law, right? Yeah. Here's the daily press, faith and values, slowing down and finding true Sabbath rest. So Barbara Brown Taylor, reminiscing about her own childhood, suggests that the commandment might as well have been remember the Sabbath day and keep it boring. She says Sunday was a day where you couldn't wear blue jeans, play cards, ride bikes or go to the movies. All you could do was go to church in the morning sit at home bored, and then go back to church again later in the day. But she suggests having a, you know, a less restrictive day. Yeah. Go for a hike, have coffee or wine with a friend, waste time together, play an instrument, write or sketch just for fun. Not to be productive, not to improve yourself. Instead, try to savor the things that we call life and remember that it is a gift. So there is this drive to change the mindset of humanity back towards a Sunday rest mindset. But it's also to include more people that if you don't want to go to church, at least go for a hike, to have coffee with a friend, just take the day off. So the mark can be on the hand. Or in the forehead, you might be convinced that this is morally right or just go along with it because it's a day to relax. Another article, Portuguese Catholics fight to bring back the work-free Sunday. The fight for a work-free Sunday, more than fair, is necessary so that there is family life for everyone, so that families, all workers, can live together and fraternize and build a fairer and more solidary world, the organization said. So Laudato Si came out in 2015. It propagated Sunday legislation, mm -hmm. didn't it? Yeah. Now here you have all of these things happening in the background and now we're going to Laudato Deum. Yeah. So this has already been achieved. So you, we can see that organizations and people in their personal capacity are already pushing for this yes. Sunday rest. We have private letters, we have organizations, we have churches, we have government organizations, mm -hmm. all of them climbing onto the bandwagon. 
Here's the Jerusalem Post from September the 24th. Our greatest sin is emissions. We must repent for climate change. This is an opinion published in the Jerusalem Post. Are these opinions there to sway other opinions? Yes. Okay. And it shows you that it's across the board. There's nobody that's excluded out of this. And even if it is a lie, <laughs> if you repeat a lie often enough, people will believe it, that's right? It. On this day of awe, there is no more notable cause for the Jewish people than saving humanity itself. Ensuring that God's covenant not to wipe out the planet with rising waters will be in some small measure because of our actions. So there's a new mission yeah. for Israel, not to represent God, no. but to save man humanity from climate change. That's it. Okay. The climate sin. All right. It is for this purpose that we have been created that we have survived and flourished. There is no higher fulfillment of the Jewish mission than to honor and save the majesty of God's creation and to do so as individuals and part of a global Jewish collective with Israel as our national platform. Because of Shabbat observance in Israel, greenhouse gas emissions are reduced by a third and are nearly zero on Yom Kippur. Once again, on on a special day. Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. Martin, we are living in the anti-typical Day of Atonement, mm -hmm. Yom Kippur. So they want the whole world to realize what a wonderful effect it is to keep Shabbat because it reduces climate catastrophes or climate emissions. So Martin, the whole world, the rest of the world, should take a lesson, but which day would they implement? You've seen in the previous articles, they going for the false Sabbath. All right, so they'll be going for the first day of the week. Yes. The and Sunday. they want to legislate it. So the battle will take place largely in the Christian nations. If every denomination of the Jewish people truly sanctified Shabbat as a non-consumer day of rest, and this example was followed by other faith communities, then Shabbat would save the Jewish people along with the entire planet. Is that planting an idea? Oh, for sure. Has it been absorbed by Western society? Yes. And if people would want to say yes, but they are talking about the Saturday Sabbath, the Jewish people, yeah, we've shown articles previously where there are climate people in Israel that is for a Sunday rest. Correct. So let's get in the big corporations. Let's see what uh, Apple has to say about it. Of course, we shouldn't forget and we, when we talk about the company Apple that there is a bite in the apple mm. and let people make of that what they want to. Martin, do we have to say something to that? Well, it's interesting. I think a lot of the world is thinking like this. Uh, will the Apple devices run on batteries, Martin? I don't know. Carbon neutral batteries. Is there such a thing? <laughs> don't you have to do mining to get the components of a battery? Don't you have to use equipment to get it out of the ground? Uh, don't... Uh, doesn't the production of car batteries for the new generation electric cars mm -hmm. put more carbon into the atmosphere than the original coal system did? They don't think so. No, they don't think so. And, and they happily ignore it, right? But also the portrayal of Mother Earth. We'll see. But is this all maybe linked to what the Pope has in store for this? It's for a mindset. Mm -hmm. It's for a mindset. And the goddess is Mother Earth. Yeah. It's Gaia. But let's turn now to the documents. This was just the backdrop. Uh, I think this is going to be quite a lengthy discussion <laughs> by yeah. the looks of things. Now before Laudato Deum came out, this is what the Catholic World Report had to say on the issue. So they wrote the following article. Here is what I hope 
Laudato Si 2.0 will say. So this is before it came out. What did they want out of this document? The human person, according to Genesis, has a privileged place in the world. The patristic tradition spoke of man as a singer, as the one who gives voice to the rest of God's creation to proclaim his glory. Now, we spoke about glory in previous ones. It's about the law, character. Uh, the law that portrays the character of God. Now, let's see what uh, these Roman Catholic institutions were hoping for. But I also thought that the Catholic Church needed to be saying something more than CNN does, or at least not just the same thing with the same pious words and a dash of holy water added. I also thought the secular environmental movement posed some dangers to Christian orthodoxy, and I believe the Pope needed to point them out. What I'm suggesting is that if we look at the human person integrally, we need to consider the total environment, including the moral environment in which we live together. Martin, do they want morality in the document? Definitely. And have, did we see that other people are also speaking about it? The sin of omission? Correct. It would seem to me that this requires the kind of holistic, seamless approach that demands a comprehensive view of what we are doing and not focus only on some part of the physical environmental agenda. So they were hoping for a moral directive. Nor in the name of that partnership and fraternal dialogue should the church neglect what is uniquely her responsibility, the overall human environment with its physical and moral dimensions. Mm -hmm. They want moral legislation. They want moral direction. They don't just want a CNN documentary on how bad the climate is. No, but we can also say that in the encyclical, Laudato Si, that was... It was Modern. already there. Yeah. It was already there. Now, Martin, when we read Laudato Deum, there was very little moral directive in it. That's true. I mean, God, I think, was mentioned three or four times, Jesus once or twice. The whole document was actually a lot of scientific jargon. Jargon with a little bit of pantheism thrown in here and there. Mm. And the rest was a high school project using popular science yeah. and not true science yeah. as to the situation. All right. And Martin, there's a big furor in the world about this because now the whole world has to change. You have to go from, from uh, gas-driven vehicles to electric vehicles. Mm. And as we said, the production of electric vehicles plus the, the dangers that go along with the batteries that are exploding, that even ships sure. don't want to transport these cars anymore because of the fire risks involved, etc., etc. But the mindset has to change. So the auto industry has to change. Has that brought about uh, strikes? Yeah. M many in uh, the U.S. has uh, had big ones. I don't know if it's even stopped yet. All right. Now, if you're going to stop all of these major industries, aren't the trade unions going to be up in arms? Oh, for sure. All right. Now, we read in the Spirit of Prophecy in Letter 200 of 1903 that the trade unions will be one of the agencies that will bring upon this earth a time of trouble such as has not been since the world began. Yeah, you have to come down from your standard of living. Mm. You have to accept what is essential, but not necessarily what you want, exactly. right? Exactly. Did that we see that in the articles that we were showing? Yes, and people are going to be unhappy. So here's another quote. Political corruption is destroying love of justice and regard for truth. And even in free America, rulers and legislators, in order to secure public favor, will yield to the popular demand for a law enforcing Sunday observance. Liberty of conscience, which has cost so great a sacrifice, will no longer be respected. In the soon coming conflict, we shall see exemplified the prophet's word. The dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. 
the conflict will have to hone in on the law of God. True. And all these things, everything that we've just seen, we have to look, is this already in Laudato Si? And now Laudato Diem, is it getting Correct. this together? And we must remember that if you want to attack God's law in its entirety, mm -hmm. then you have to attack the seal of God, which is the authoritative commandment which gives validity to the entire law because it explains who the lawgiver is and what his power is. Yes. So modern Sunday legislation will be an attack on the law of God. Oh, for sure. So let's go to the document itself, Laudato Deum. As we've said before, very little on morality because he doesn't have to put it there. But he also doesn't have to introduce the legislation. No. He should just point a finger in a direction. Now in Laudato Si, he already referred to Sunday legislation. Exactly. So he doesn't have to do it in Laudato Deo. He had the whole morality issue and angle in Laudato Si. Correct. So what is he doing now? We must go back to the prophetic picture. We have here in, on the screen in the backdrop... Two beasts mm. that are involved in bringing the world to the point of decision. One is already his hand on the legislation, the other one is reaching for it. Correct. So that's the symbolism of the picture behind us. So this beast, which happens to be the first beast of Revelation 13, the papacy, has to point the finger towards the second beast. So the mother has to tell the daughter, mm. this is what I want you to do. She's already done it. How far has the second beast responded? And is it only going to respond after Laudato Deum, or has it already started to respond after Laudato Si? Yeah, it's already making its movement in darkness. All right. Did the Pope, visit the United States yes. and speak in its legislative halls. Yes. yes, he did. And those dates are very interesting and the implementation thereof. And now we are at the point of Laudato Deum. Let's read some of it. It is not helpful to confuse multilateralism with the world authority concentrated in one person or in an elite with excessive power. When we talk about the possibility of some form of world authority regulated by law, we need not necessarily think of a personal authority. We are speaking above all of more effective world organizations, equipped with the power to provide for the global common good, the elimination of hunger and poverty, and the sure defense of fundamental human rights. Mm -hmm. So he's touting the same issues again, and he's asking for a world authority with clout. Yeah, with teeth. All right. Uh, have they started implementing that during the pandemic? Yes. And did they want the World Health Organization to have total authority over every nation, tribe, and people That's it. regarding these issues? So there's a forerunner. Mm -hmm. For a pandemic, what about a climate pandemic? Yes, climate crisis. Is he asking for a body with the same powers? Mm -hmm. Okay. And every nation would have to sign away its authority to be subject to this. So is this a universal issue? Yes. So when the mark of the beast will be applied to every nation, tribe, and people, and everybody will be forced, then the mechanism... The organizations have to be in place. That's it. Are Maybe they already in place? They're already in place. Okay. It continues to be regrettable that global crises are being squandered when they could be the occasions to bring about beneficial changes. Doesn't that sound very much like the World Economic Forum? It's exactly the same wording. Doesn't it sound like Gates? That's it. We cannot squander <laughs> a good opportunity no. like this, a never good calamity. Never let a good crisis go to waste. Never let it go to waste. So legislation has been introduced. Yes. All right. 
So now we have to do what? Look at prophecy. That's it. There are two hands here. There's the first beast and there's the second beast. According to prophecy, who's going to be the driving force? It's going to be the second beast. That's it. That's the one implementing everything. Doesn't it say that he will force everyone? Yes, but not him through the second beast. He will f the second beast will force everyone to worship the first beast. That's it. Right? How do you worship the first beast? By obeying it. Right? Yep. Worship God and give glory to him mm -hmm. is the message of the first angel. Here is worship the first beast and give glory to him. Yeah, wonder after him. Wonder after him, receive his mindset. Martin, we have to guard the avenues of our mind. We have to start realizing where we are in the stream of time. Right. Because a lot of us are asleep and sa just looking at all of this as oh, just another glitch. All right, so we have two very distinct points here. Asking for a world body with clout and then saying we cannot allow a good catastrophe to go by without utilizing it to get our legislation in place which they've done mm -hmm. here's another one in the medium term globalization favors spontaneous cultural interchanges greater mutual knowledge and processes of integration of peoples which end up provoking a multilateralism from below and not simply one determined by the elites of power. Didn't the papacy in its fratelli tutti work towards this goal? That's it. Bringing all the religions together yeah. and all of them on the climate bandwagon. That's it. And then we also now see in the spirit of prophecy quote that it will be popular demand that gets the people to bow to this this is that's why he says it won't be from only the elites in power they want the simple ones also to be implemented so are they working behind the scenes already to implement it all for sure so it's not going to come after laudato deo mm -hmm. it's already there for this reason, I reiterated that unless citizens control political power, national, regional, and municipal, it will not be possible to control damage to the environment. So now he is talking to the man in the street. Mm -hmm. You must be involved and you must have my mindset or else we're going to have a calamity. And if you don't come on board with my mindset, then calamities will make sure that you do. That's it. And then they can use nationwide or even worldwide emergency broadcasts. Yes, and legislation and a governing body like the World Health Organization is already doing. So everybody has to be on board from the lowest to the highest. All the world wandered after the beast. Point 65, hence the creatures of this world no longer appear to us under the merely natural guise because the risen one is mysteriously holding them to himself and directing them towards fullness as their end. Martin, when I see one capitalized, it is a big red flag for me because this is occult language that is applied to Lucifer, mm. the one the wronged one. The very flowers of the field and the birds which his human eyes contemplated and admired are now imbued with his radiant presence. If the universe unfolds in God who fills it completely, there's a mystical meaning to be found in a leaf, in a mountain trail, in a dew drop, in a poor person's face. The world sings of an infinite love. How can we fail to care for it? Martin, this is pantheism. That's Mother Earth. This is Mother Earth. This is Gaia worship. This is paganism at its best. It is evil, what is written there. And do you see how, if you just read it and you don't know this, it sounds so good. And it gives glory to Lucifer because Lucifer mm. is the one capitalized. Point 72, if we consider that emissions per individual in the United States are about two times greater than those of individuals living in China, 
and about seven times greater than the average of the poorest countries, we can state that a broad change in the irresponsible lifestyles connected with the Western model would have a significant long-term impact. As a result, along with indispensable political decisions, we would be making progress along the way to genuine care for one another. Now this to me is absolutely fascinating. Mm -hmm. He doesn't care about the overall emissions of a nation. That doesn't matter. No. That doesn't matter. He targets the United States. That's it. So what he is inferring mm -hmm. is that the United States must lead the way. That's it. That's what he's inferring. That is, this is the language that's giving the second beast now the instruction. And the way in which it is implemented and done will be read from the legislations of the second beast. But we must remember that the second beast introduces the legislation so that the first beast receives honor and glory. Yes. So people that expected laudato deum to actually talk about the legislation are totally misreading the signs of the times. That's it. And they're waiting for the wrong institution to do that. Yes, the second beast must do it. Mm -hmm. So that's why he's targeting the second beast, the United States of America. And this to me is prophetic fulfillment. As far as the science is concerned, we don't even have to talk about it no. because he's quoting popular science and it's like a high school project. And I'm sure he never ever wrote it. Some Jesuit expert wrote it for him and used the popular science and ignored the real science. So we don't even have to talk about no. it. We're interested in the prophetic mm -hmm. aspects. So we have pantheism, we have paganism, we have Luciferianism, we have all of these in the document. We have, as you said, very little of Jesus, mm -hmm. very little of the true God, but we have the request, United States, do my bidding. That's it. That is exactly where we are at this stage. Now here's a very interesting article from Catholic News Agency. Pope Francis launches seven-year Laudato Si action plan. The Laudato Si action platform will focus on seven sectors, families, parishes, schools, hospitals, businesses, organizations, and religious orders. Do you think it's a coincidence that he's using the number seven? No. And I Is he applying deity to himself? Yes, in his prophetic language, seven years is also prophetic. Okay. The Pope explained that the action plan also has seven goals. The response to the cry of the earth, the response to the cry of the poor, ecological economics, adoption of simple lifestyles, ecological education, ecological spirituality, and community involvement. How much of humanity does that entail? Oh. All of it. All of it. And it's also, like we mentioned in the previous ones, it's got moral issues is morality as as well now what if i despise his moral issues you will have to uh, get re-educated oh i'll have to become re-educated i therefore renew my appeal let us take care of our mother earth is this a religious organization or a pagan organization it's pagan it's pagan let us overcome the temptation of selfishness that makes us predators of resources let us cultivate respect for the gifts of the earth and creation. Let us inaugurate a lifestyle and a society that is finally eco-sustainable. Martin, if we would respect God, then all of these things would fall into place automatically. He leaves God right out of it. That's it. He like worships that. the creature rather than the creator. Exactly. Doesn't the Bible speak against that? 100%. You know, and we must realize this is not a new document or article. This was the plan, the action plan. And when was it implemented? In 2020. 2020. So Martin, if you add seven years to 2020, what year do you get to? I don't think I'm going to do that math. Just now I get into trouble. But you can't add seven to 2020. No. You get into trouble. Yeah. So that means if you're going to get into trouble, I will get into trouble. So we'll leave it to the listeners to add seven years to 2020. 
to find out when this action plan must be complete. Yeah. Okay. On a journey that will last for seven years, we will let ourselves be guided by the seven aims of Laudato Si, which will show us the direction while we pursue the vision of integral ecology. So Martin, he's giving seven years from 2020 to receive his mindset. And have we seen this happening? We see this. We see this, right? In the articles that we've shown before Laudato Diem even came out. Slowly but surely, all of these things are being implemented. So, Martin, this is Luciferian. Because God is not in this equation at all. And unfortunately, the whole world at this stage is wondering and encaptured by this. Okay. There is hope. We can all collaborate, each one with his own culture and experience, each one with her own initiatives and capacities, so that our Mother Earth may be restored to her original beauty and creation, may once again shine according to God's plan. Which God? Definitely not the God of the Bible. What's going to happen to Mother Earth at the second coming? It's going to be totally wiped out. It's going to go to Abusos. Mm. So, Martin, are they going to achieve their ob objective? No. No. They're trying to do the opposite of what the Bible says will happen. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not against taking care of the environment. Let's make that very clear because I've had that numerous times. I hate pollution. And Destruction, chem, all of this. And chemtrails and adding al aluminum to the ground or aluminium as it is pronounced in other countries and regions is not conducive to a good environment. And seeding uh, with metals and all kinds of things is not going to be very good for the environment. Mm -hmm and all the spraying and all of these things. I am for the natural processes that God introduced. That's true, because even the food that we grow, yes, we don't use chemicals and pesticides no. and all of this, so that we propagate God's method, organic gardening, like he does in his perfect ecosystems. In that sense, we are greenies. Yes, but I'm not going to bludgeon my neighbor over the head. But uh, if you do it God's way, you will automatically be in harmony with his creation. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, when I was in the world, a creature was something that was a commodity. You could do with it whatever you wanted. But once you realize this is God's creation, mm -hmm. it becomes special. And uh, we advocate health from the ground up. So there is a way which is God's way, which mm -hmm. gives glory to God. And there is a way which is the devil's way which gives glory to other forces, pagan forces, and to Lucifer. So when we say, when they have an article on stating that Sabbath rest is good for you and all of that, if it was kept the biblical way, we 100% agree with it. Yes. But it's not that way. No, it's not that way. It's always the devil's way. Yeah. So let's take it a step further. Let's not say too much about Laudato Deum because it doesn't say too much. No, but it's, it's giving marching orders. Correct. So let's reiterate. It gives the standard paradigm with many adjectives to make it sound powerful. Then it highlights pantheism and the need for all humanity to come on board. It highlights uh, organizations with clout to implement everything. It wants all the people to be involved from the ground mm -hmm. up. And it wants the United States to take the lead. That's a summary of Laudato Deum. Mm -hmm. Correct? Now, if the United States must take the lead, then something must change, right? Yes. And what did that Catholic article say? They wanted morality. Yes. But morality was already in Laudato Si. Mm hmm so, is the United States, the second beast, going to come on board as far as the morality issue is concerned? We've spoken about the pendulum that's supposed to swing. It's supposed to swing, right? So, let's look at Project 2025. Building now for a conservative victory through policy, personnel, and training. It is not enough 
for conservatives to win elections. If we are going to rescue the country from the grip of the radical left, we need both a governing agenda and the right people in place, ready to carry this agenda out on day one of the next conservative administration. I find it interesting that day one is also capitalized. This is the goal of the 2025 Presidential Transition Project. The project will build on four pillars that will collectively pave the way for an effective conservative administration. What do they want, Martin? They want legislation. And they want moral legislation. That's it. They want morality to be brought back. They want the issues addressed that are going haywire in the world. That's it. The whole LGBTQ mm -hmm. plus whatever has to be addressed. The whole new woke agenda has to be addressed. The swamp has to be drained. All the same terminology is coming back. Now, this document exceeds 900 pages. And it's very comprehensive. Mm -hmm. And it was written by the Heritage Foundation. And, and it's not only one person that wrote this. It no. was hundreds. Correct. And wasn't Tucker Carlson part of the Heritage Foundation in the past? Yes, he's very much involved. Even when he, the day before they fired him at Fox, he had that speech that we showed. Correct. So this is a very important think tank. And they wouldn't bring out a document exceeding 900 pages to show the blueprint for a government mm -hmm. of a conservative nature and the implementation thereof from day one. Yeah. Do they have a time frame then? Perfectly. And why is it called Project 2025? They got a name. That's it's when old. they want to take over, right? Um, is there a... <laughs> Martin, is there a Hegelian dialectic taking place in the United States? to swing popular sentiment in a particular direction. Oh, very much. Isn't that interesting? Well, if you take the speaker yes. that was just ousted. ousted, the Democrats, it's almost as if the Democrats and, and uh, Republicans came together to get rid of him. Correct. And what will, what will be the result? Isn't it going to be a more conservative one that's going to take his place? Would the Democrats really want to vote for something like that or would they rather keep a more liberal one? N normally, they would rather keep a normal one. So no nothing and makes sense. This is Hegelian dialectic. That's it. Well, even the interim speaker now removed Nancy Pelosi and another person out of their capital offices. Yes. So there's this, this battle between left and right and the whole Trump issue and the court cases and the sentiment that is being produced. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful game. And I've always said uh, we are observers. We are watchmen on the wall of Zion. We're not supposed to be involved no. and be, you know, soapbox orientated. We're watching this. We're watching it with great interest. 2025. And uh, the papal seven-point agenda... 2027. Now, one of the issues, besides all the political issues and the moral issues that they want to address, is Sabbath rest, right? It says in their document, God ordained the Sabbath as a day of rest, and until very recently, the Judeo-Christian tradition sought to honor that mandate by moral and legal regulation of work on that day. Moreover, a shared day off makes it possible for families and communities to enjoy time off together rather than as atomized individuals and provides a healthier cadence of life for everyone. Unfortunately, that communal day of rest has eroded under the pressures of consumerism and secularism, especially for low-income workers does this sound like the Pope? I wanted to say exactly. It, it sounds like Francis, Pope Francis wrote this. It sounds like one of his songs. <laughs> <laughs> he should just put it to heavy metal rock music and the whole world would swallow this, right? <laughs> uh, you know, the previous Pope used rock music yeah. to bring across such sentiments. I would suggest that when perhaps he would be successful. But Martin, this is very interesting. 
And the, the interesting thing is they want a communal day. If everybody would just do it on one day. Mm -hmm. Now for the time being, mm -hmm. they realize there are groups that don't do it on that day, like the Jews. That's the Jews. And the Seventh-day Adventists, and the Seventh-day Baptists, maybe, and maybe some other little fringe groups. Congress should encourage communal rest by amending the Fair Labor Standards Act to require that workers be paid time and a half for hours worked on the Sabbath. That day would default to Sunday. Mm. So they have a particular day. It's a day in mind. And for everything, for the ecology, for the environment, for... Except for employers with sincere religious observance of a Sabbath at a different time, e.g. Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, the obligation would transfer to that period instead. Houses of worship, to the limited extent they may have FLSA covered employees and employers legally required to operate round the clock, such as hospitals and first responders, would be exempt as would workers otherwise exempt from overtime. So, in their document, they make allowance for people that want to keep it on another day. Mm -hmm. And for people that are working. All right. Now, is that a convenient thing if one says, no, I want it this day and another one wants it that day? No, it's only going to last for a while. They and want a communal day, don't they? Didn't that's they it. they say that? And then it's, it will default to Sunday. With default to Sunday. Doesn't this also sound like the law that Constantine brought in the first time? All right, it sounds like that law. And the other interesting thing is, Martin, even if they make allowance for people that don't want to keep this day, once calamities start mm -hmm. increasing and people start playing the blame game and saying, you know, why can't we all be one on this issue? Yes. After all, Christians, wise up. We all keep Sunday. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. And a stubborn group says no, because that's the mark of the beast, and we don't want to worship the beast. We want to worship God. Could they get fed up with them? Yes, most Could definitely. Could popular demand require that uh, they come into line or else? For sure. So uh, with this interim rider, it gives us time to preach the message. That's it. And let's just see it as that. And here's an alternative view. While some conservatives believe that the government should encourage certain religious observances by making it more expensive for employers and consumers to not partake in those observances, uh, does this sound like curtailing buying and selling? Yes, you see, so it moves because they want, they said, okay, people have to pay their workers if they have to come on Sunday, but now they're moving away from, no, no, actually there should be no work. Okay. Other conservatives believe that the government's role is to protect the free exercise of religion by eliminating barriers as opposed to erecting them. Whereas imposing overtime rules on the Sabbath would lead to higher costs and limited access to goods and services and reduce work available on the Sabbath, while also incentivizing some people through higher wages to desire to work on the Sabbath, the proper role of government in helping to enable individuals to practice their religion is to reduce barriers to work options and to fruitful employer and employee relations. Martin, is the alternative view we should actually stop Sunday work altogether where it's possible? For sure. And will unions be involved in this? Ah. 100%. So, Martin, laudato deum, asking the uni United States to wise up now. And a document already in place for a potential conservative government to do exactly that, including the request of Laudato C to see to Sunday legislation. Yes. Is it all in place? It's all in place. This, the, the, those two documents, Laudato C, Laudato Deum, and this one is very much intermingled. You can see the... And then the seven-year plan. Yeah. Ah. So, Martin, if this has to come from day one, mm. 2025, and there's a seven-year plan, which started in 2020, 
then they want all of this done within two years of the new government taking over, right? Mm -hmm. So from 2025 to 2027, we could be heading for very interesting times. Maybe a, even a time such as never was, a time of trouble. What about prophetic times? Mm. And not in terms of time setting, Martin, let's just make that quite clear in case somebody gets a nervous breakdown. But in terms of the unfolding of prophetic predictions. So the result, ample job options that do not require work on the Sabbath. So that individuals in roles that sometimes do require Sabbath work are empowered to negotiate directly with their employer to achieve their desired schedule. So the employer says, no more work on a Sunday, unless it is essential, as they said, for a hospital. But even the Sabbath of the Lord in the Bible makes allowance for that. Exactly the same. Is the prophetic picture unfolding? I believe that you have to be blind to see this not happening. Okay. So, Martin, how loud must our voices become? We don't have any time to sit on our laurels and be quiet. Is this part of the three angels' messages? <laughs> For sure. This is... <laughs> and that's why we're doing the three angels' messages. All right. So if this is part of the three angels' messages, then we have in juxtaposition here the requirements of God and the requirements of the beast to be implemented by the second beast. Mm. And if you dare to go against it, you will not be able to buy or sell. They've already said this in this document. There will be certain consequences. It has to be a collective mindset. All the world wondered after the mm. beast. It has to be such that it is linked to some issue so that it doesn't only apply to nations that keep the Sabbath mm. or the Sunday, but everybody. In other words, the organization that is to have the clout to implement mm -hmm. it on a universal scale must somehow have the power to implement that as well yep. at the dictate, perhaps, of the United States of America. That's it. So, Martin and our listeners, we believe that we are living in the very last moments of Earth's history and that the final, that the final decision, worship God and give glory to Him, or worship the beast and honor him, what everybody has to think about and make a decision on. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, what an interesting time in which we are living. So many ideas floating around, so many opposites clashing against each other, so many Hegelian issues floating around, and mindsets being forced in a particular thinking pattern. But we have a directive, an infallible directive, the Word of God, which warns against these issues. Please, Lord, enlighten minds so that people can make decisions which lead to eternal life and not to eternal destruction. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.